All right, in this Knife Thoughts video, we're going to be looking at this knife. This is a Grady's from Cutlery Made Northfield number 93 Ram Foot, um, full model number 933119, uh, 93 pattern. Uh, the three stands for the sheep foot, although they're calling this a ram foot blade. One blade, and it was made in 2019, in antique autumn jigged bone. Uh, so the 93 is a new pattern for gradation cutlery. It's a, a long, more slender sway back versus their 47 pattern. And it's one that people have really liked. People really snapped these up. Uh, they did both a Way North Cutlery SFO for Charlie Campania in a lamb foot which was the first lamb foot made in uh, the United States, as far as people can tell. And then they also did this ram foot. So they've been calling all of these the ram foot. But this is the one that, that I decided to get because this one has this the original ram foot etch, and it actually has this new shield for gradation cutlery, which is the ram's head. So pretty interesting. And first I want to talk about the ram foot. So they said that this is a, a gradation cutlery is calling this a ram foot blade. So there's all these kind of names um, for the blades. There's the sheep foot, the lamb foot, and the ram foot. Um, so what's the difference? So probably the most well known is the sheep foot. So the sheep foot generally is described as two parallel lines make of the edge and the spine, and then a rounded angle that goes to a straight part of the spine towards the point. This one has been sharpened a lot, um, it's a 15 that I've used quite a bit. So it's not super parallel anymore, but a good example is something like this. This is a very classic sheep foot secondary on this 53 uh, Cuban Stockman. So that's a sheep foot. And then a lamb foot is where rather than the spine and the edge being parallel, the spine actually is angled slightly downward so that the, the um, height of the blade or the tallness of the blade is less at the tip than it is at the, the ricasso or the kick. Um, I don't have one to show right now, unfortunately. Uh, I did, but I don't have one to show right now. But um, that's the difference with the, the the lamb foot, if you've seen those recently come out, and a sheep foot. Sheep foot, it's parallel. The lamb foot, the spine curves, or doesn't curve, it doesn't curve. It's angled downwards toward this uh, rounded area where it goes towards the tip. And then a lot of people had a problem with the fact that gradation cutlery was calling this a different blade shape, a ram foot. Um, I don't have a problem with it at all, and I think it's silly to have a problem with it because even if that's not a traditional name for a blade shape, it is a different blade shape. So you can see that just like the lamb foot is different because the spine curves downward towards the edge, this curves very clearly upward away from the edge in comparison to a sheep foot. So I believe that's why they called it the ram foot because rather than the edge being parallel with the, or I'm sorry, rather than the spine being parallel with the edge, the spine curve, or again, doesn't curve, the, the spine is angled upward away from the edge. So what it does is it creates this even wider section here up at the tip area compared to at the ricasso or the kick. Um, so it makes for a pretty wide or tall blade at the tip and I do think, you know, if you're going to call a lamb foot, not a sheep foot, why not call this, which is just, um, which is different in the opposite way from a sheep foot as a lamb foot is, a different blade shape. So this is what they're calling the ram foot. And it, it's an interesting blade. It, it's a pretty hefty seeming blade. Um, it, it almost reminds me of a hawkbill where there's a curved edge without the curved edge. Hawkbills often get wider towards the tip. Um, this also gets wider towards the tip, but it has that nice straight edge. So it's a cool um, little kind of new thing that Gradation Cutlery has done. Not that this type of blade hasn't been made before, but just that they're differentiating it. Uh, this is an etch. It's kind of an interesting etch. It's just real nice and plain and simple. The original ram foot. And I think it's pretty cool. Um, it differentiates it, like I said. It designates it as both the pattern and this blade shape. And um, I think it's a, 
a, a cool thing that Gradient Cutlery has done. But like I said, I mostly got this because of this really cool um, shield. So uh, it's a ram's head. It's, you know, as you can see, it's, it's made to, ha it has these lines punched into it to make it look like a ram's head. And I think it's really, really well done. Um, it's designed by someone I've talked to at, at Creation Color named Randy Bell. And um, really cool, really well done. I think it looks like a ram. It almost looks like he's angry about the charge or something like that. Um, so really cool shield and I appreciate unique shields. Like for example, I just have this sitting next to me the banana shield that Gradation Cutlery does. And with this shield, I, now I might decide to, to get the um, other animal shields that Gradation Cutlery has done, which as far as I know, are um, the beaver and the cattle, North American cattle bone. Um, so it, it is a pin shield, which is nice because when it was down here versus up here, you know, I was like, oh, I hope, I hope it's pinned. Um, but, you can see that it is pinned, which is nice. I always, that's one of the things I like about gradation cutlery um, is that when they do use a shield, they pin it. Uh, and so it's an interesting little thing. Some people didn't like that it wasn't up here where a shield normally is, but I have absolutely no problem with that. Um, I think it's interesting for it to be different and there are traditional or vintage examples of knives with the shield down there. So there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Now this antique autumn jig bone is pretty uh, pretty nice actually. I, I'm not always the hugest fan of jig bone, but I like this. It's it's even, uh, but not so uniform that it doesn't look hand done. It does look hand hand jigged, um, and and it feels nice and grippy. Like it would actually give you, um, you know, a practical purpose. Give you some grip. It's pretty dark here on this uh, show side but then where they ground it to fit with the bolster, it's, you know, it gets a little lighter. And same deal over here. It's a little lighter on this side, um, but pretty much the same and has that lighter area there. The bolsters are fit really well. No real snagging between the, the bone and the bolsters. You can see that they're threaded. Um, I believe that's what that's called. And uh, it is easily pinchable because of this nice high blade despite the fact that it sits nice and low on the handle. So that's the thing that I really like about sheep foot blades is that they do sit low on the handle, but you can often still pinch them. And as you can see, it has a half stop, um, pretty nice. Let's see, I'd say about uh, six, six and a half pull. So not a light pull um, and not like a ridiculously strong pull either. You can use either, you know, pinching it or the long pull. And I do think that this blade shape looks really nice with that long pull and that cut swedge. Um, I think that the cut swedge where it starts right after that long pull and goes down to the uh, curve towards the tip looks really good. So um, yeah, I think it's a really good looking knife. Uh, you can see there's no, no gaps at all really on the back spring. As for the sway back pattern, a lot of people really, really like the sway back. It's a very traditional pattern. Um, one of the really cool things you see on the internet on the forum sometimes is a picture from the steamship Arabia, which is a, a steamship that w that sunk um, in the 19th century. And a lot of the knives, like a surprising, at least to me, number of the knives were swaybacks. And honestly, I think that's probably, at least in part, or I would guess, um, some of the the inspiration for this knife because some of them had this really big pronounced sheet foot blade. Um, so it is a very traditional knife pattern. Um, a huge number of the knives in that in that picture that were found in that the uh, wreckage of that, that ship, that steamboat, were very similar to this. So it's pretty cool that they that they did that this historic pattern in a way that Again, like a lot of gradation cutlery knives, not too many companies have done recently, but they've done it really well. Um, so it's a really cool knife. It's one, like I say, that I just got. Um, not sure if I'm gonna use this one. I'd like to, but I'm not sure I'm going to. Uh, but it's a really cool knife. You can get a really solid four finger grip on the sway back. Um, and I've never really used a sway back knife too much. Um, so I would like to see how I like this grip in use because, you know, it does kind of go back into the palm of your hand. I think it's probably really good for these kinds of, you know, pull cuts. Um, but it seems pretty comfortable in this grip also. Kind of get a nice 
rounded grip with your fingers there, and then this kind of seats itself in the palm of your hand. Um, this, uh, it feels really substantial because in comparison to something like the probably you know more familiar 15 pattern, it's significantly bigger. So you can see that it's coming up on an inch longer, so more like four and a quarter or four and a half closed versus three and a half, and probably at least a half an inch, if not a little bit more longer on the blade. So, you know, definitely a, a more significant or um, bigger knife that you might be able to do a little bit bigger work with. Uh, I really like sheet foot blades uh, for, for general use. At first, before I was into tra traditional knives, I didn't really get them. I didn't know how you would use it, you know, because the tip would be hitting. Um, but I found them to be really useful, especially on that uh, 15 that I have there. So it's a knife that I think it looks really good. It's interesting because it is historical, but at the same time, it's different. And it also, I think, could be put to good use if you wanted to get one of these as a user. They made a bunch of different versions, so if you don't like this handle or you don't like this shield, there's certainly other options. Um, so it's a cool knife, one that I'm glad to have gotten and uh, happy to show off. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out knifethoughts.com. That's my blog and website. And uh, enter your email address so you can get updates when I post new um, articles. Don't forget to follow me on social media at Knife Thoughts, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, and subscribe to my channel here. If you have any questions or anything like that, you can feel free to leave them. One last thing here, I almost forgot. This knife came with a pin, and I believe all of these um, of this type with the shield came with this pin, whereas most of the time, if Gradish and Cutlery makes a pin for a knife, it only comes in like one of four or one of five tubes. Um, so that's cool too. It's a, I, I collect the Gradish and Cutlery pins somewhat, so that's a nice little addition. And uh, last but not least, don't forget to go out and do good.